Hello and welcome to another lesson. In this Sibelius lesson, we're going to be exploring how to customize instruments. And to do this, we're first going to have to open up the Edit Instruments window, which can be found under the Home tab. This window allows us to do some pretty powerful things. Now, for a majority of the work you do, the chances are that you won't require the Sibelius feature. However, sometimes you'll have a project where you need something very specific regarding your instrumentation. And this is the place to come for those specialized little jobs. On the far left hand side, we have our ensemble types and we can add a new one if we wish to. And within those ensembles, we then have families of instruments. And again, we can create new families if we so desire, but we can also change where these families are displayed within the ensemble. For example, in conventional orchestral scores, we have woodwinds at the top of the score, followed by brass, followed by various percussion instruments, piano, harp, and then finally strings at the bottom. And Sibelius currently has this set up as its default, so that if I, for example, add a flute and then a trombone to my score, Sibelius will by default sit the flute on top of the trombone because of the order that's been defined here. However, if I were to change this order and send brass to the top, by default, the trombone would sit on top of the flute in the score. And likewise, moving further to the right in the Edit Instruments window, we can add or remove instruments from their families, and as before, also change their default position in the score. Normally, for example, oboe would sit above clarinet, but if I wanted to, I could change its default position to sit below clarinet in my score. But now we finally come to the really juicy part. On the right hand side, we can also edit and add new instruments. So I'm going to select flute and then click new instrument. Sibelius then asks if I want to create a new instrument based on flute. Yes, of course. And then I'll land at another window where I have control over every parameter of this new instrument. So I'm going to start by giving it a name and also changing the name as it appears in various places. You'll then see that next to that I can change its pitch range. And of course, because it's a monster flute, it should be able to play all notes in all registers. And below that we have some transposition options and below that some playback options. So I could get it to sound like a trumpet if I really wanted to. And below that again we have some chord symbol options. Now down the bottom on the left hand side we have different notation options. And we can select how many staves we would like or whether we would like to use tablature instead of regular staves. We could make it a vocal staff which would display things such as expression markings above the staff. And we can also choose its default clef and also how it should be bracketed or grouped in the score. But now we come to the juiciest of the juicy and this is where I like to play around the most. Edit staff type. This will take us to yet another window where we can do some really wacky things. Here we can change the number of staff lines as well as the space between them. I could for example create a staff with six lines with spacing twice as big as normal staffs. I can also decide whether my instrument should use a bracket or clef or key signature at the beginning of each system. And I also have options regarding bar lines. I can choose to make my bar lines extend beyond the staff. In the Notes and Rest tab, we can also change some basic note and rest properties for our instrument. For example, whether or not our instrument should use ledger lines or bar rests or even display rhythmic values. We can also do some really weird things with our stems. We could get them to always extend outside of our staff, for example. And we also have several options regarding the default positions of our rests. So there are quite a lot of parameters that can be changed and tweaked in this window. And I know what you might be thinking. So what? Interesting, but useless. To which I would reply, not necessarily. 
As an engraver, it can be hard to tell when you'll get thrown a curveball. Sometimes you'll be working on something that at first appears quite innocuous, quite harmless and very straightforward, but on closer examination has some quirks that are a bit trickier to nut out. In fact, I've even seen some customised staff types in books designed for children learning to play music, so you never know when this sort of thing will come in handy. And particularly if you're a composer, Having this sort of control over your staves opens up a whole new world of compositional and notational possibilities. And it goes without saying that if you're notating contemporary music or repertoire from the 20th century, the features offered to us in the Edit Instruments window might quickly become very useful tools.